with a yo ho ho, it's Taylor the Toaster. Welcome back to another guide on. Inazuma Eleven Go Galaxy Big Bang! And Supernova as well. But in this video in particular, we're going to go over all of the silver chests and all of the gold chests that you can get in Inazuma Eleven Go Galaxy. So the silver chests you can obtain uh, as early as Chapter 6, I believe it is. And they they can be used throughout the main story, whereas the gold chests cannot be obtained until within the post-game. So, to start off with, I'll show you where you actually get the silver key itself to open all the silver chests, and then we'll go around the world of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy to open them. So to actually get the silver chests, you basically need to head to the room that Glacier's been staying in. So the manager's room over here, easily missable on a first visit, but very easy to come here and just collect it. So right here, the silver chest would be found, and you can use that to start safe cracking some locks around this, uh, around this land. So the first one I'm going to go get will be, it's actually easier to jump over to the yacht port but this is in the very first screen of Odiva. This silver chest down here has taunted us since the start of the game. It is available on the first explorable map screen of the game. You can find this silver chest before you find any regular blue chests in the game, in some cases. It contains Whirlpool, a good defensive move for your players. Adekebe's already got it, but the fact that you can find this before even a regular chest is a bit of a tease. Uh, and the next one is actually not too much better. If we head to the training area, right here on the right-hand side, they make this one unforgettable as well. But the reward is particularly important. It's Black Data number three. So yes, you can get exclusive training regimens for the Black Room within the Silver Chest. So if you don't get that item, that's whole, essentially, mini games and other small cutscenes that we would miss out on. Just for the sake of demonstration, seeing as it wouldn't take very long, let's actually show off which one Black Data number three is. Sounds like I'm saying Mambo number five. Um... But let's give it to uh, Arian, sure. This new one is Black Data number three. We haven't even got number two yet, but Dino Escape straight out of uh, Chrono Stones, I guess. Arian, whoa, run away! Well, <laughs> it didn't go marvelously, did it? A whole one extra point. It's fine, I don't like uh, making use of training slots anyway. Let's have one more go. I did think, uh, yeah, you do get a guaranteed excellent on your first try with a character if they haven't trained in anything at all. Uh, but, wow, I mean, 12 points for a good. Uh, that's plenty enough anyway, so let's get out of there. Instead, we're going to next head to the Mermaid Hall for the next item. Enter from the right-hand side from the training area, and I love this area of the game. We really don't get to explore it enough. You kind of have to go through it once and then never again. But this is the main way you're going to start to get special tactics. This is the first time in forever that Skies of the Limit has actually been an unlockable tactic. In fact, I think this is the first time it's ever been something you can actually finish the game without. But it's right here in the aquarium, so make sure to grab that. We'll be getting more special tactics as the video goes on. We have a singular silver treasure chest to go and get at the Saints Way Stadium. It is here right in front or right next to Celia Hills' competition route. You can get a move manual for Plasma Cut. This is the dribble that Sol Daystar uses. So if you're playing Supernova, you probably already have someone with this move, but if you're playing Big Bang, like I am doing in this recording, this might be one of the only times you see that move, and it is really good. Also, I'm just kind of heading here for my own purposes because there's five Power Pack Societies that I want to take a quick look at. Next, we're going to tackle the five silver chests that you'll find in actual Ryman. So this is all stuff that you can get straight away as soon as you have the silver key. And some of it is very worth getting, like Perfect Pass is one of the most competitively important skills 
uh, in the game's landscape from my knowledge. I don't really know how to use it that well, but other people can tell you plenty well the importance of that one. Uh, the skip travel to the TM bus is only here in the post game, but you can still go to the Ryman car park whenever you need to open up a move manual for Holy Roller. So this was Arian Sherwin's strongest shot in Chrono Stones, but in this game he has uh, Typhoon, Tornado, Hurricane instead. So they made sure you could get Holy Roller in a manual instead, just in case you wanted to give it back to Arian. Look at this guy, uh, he won't lose to Terry, I think he might, but... <laughs> Uh, Desmodus Dracul also has Holy Roller in his moveset now, so you can still get him, get that move somehow if you're playing Big Bang or Supernova, whichever one it is that he's in, I always forget. Um, but next, yes, we want to head into the dojo for a different silver chest and a different regular treasure chest that I've been forgetting the whole time. The striped gloves, that's what you came here for. But no, within the silver chest, you can get black data number two we got number three first um we can have a look at number two in just a moment uh, for now you want to head to the outskirts of the hospital because this one's annoying like whenever you see this in regular play i just think darn i really want to free up that parking space for anyone who wants to park here but you just can't until you've got the silver chest but silver key but eventually you can get yourself a small pendant and the last one uh, in Inazuma Town can be a little tricky because it's described as being in the outskirts and my immediate reaction was where's the outskirts again you want to head south of the shopping area you can find all of Buddy's mates uh, hanging out here match with aliens Pfft. good luck hey weren't you meant to be playing against the world and all of that stuff but right over here in a silver chest we can get the Steel Tower Ticket 2. Of course, this competition route hosted by Julie is just further up this route, so you need the Silver Key if you want to take a look at it. So, uh, keep it in mind. I'm gonna take a quick look at the Black Data once again because I needed to be in the Orion Express to get our next uh, thing anyway. Let's pick... Vylong, you need to increase your I don't oh yeah you can invest it into anything that's how that's how it works in galaxy way up to the skies we go we've got 15 that we can invest in something uh get a bit better at blocking a little bit better at kicking a little bit better at dribbling sure it's not a plus 30 like an excellent in the level 3 would have been but nevertheless uh, we have another sh another thing to go and pick up in silica. So let's head over there and do exactly that. Our reward in silica or Sandorius doesn't require us to go very far. It's right outside of the station with this scenic view of the sun or suns. And in here you can get a move manual for shoot blocker which basically means that the power of your shot blocks will go up by 10%. I thought I could give a vague explanation or I could just get the actual definition. <laughs> so pardon the cut. Anyway, next you want to go over to the next planet. As you would expect, it goes in order. Nyadi has the single most important item in a treasure chest. So important, in fact, I recorded it way earlier than this, so a different Tale of the Toaster will be joining you now. The next silver chest item is probably the most important one possible. So important, in fact, that this uh, face cam recording has come from a completely different day before I've even started the rest of the video, but I couldn't cope any longer without having the treasure pendant. This is now an equipable item which I can give to Arian Sherwind. I think, I don't know if it needs to be anyone in the main spot or if you can just give it. Presumably you can give it to just anyone in the team. It doesn't stack to my knowledge, but not only will it increase your dribble and your block by 10, this item will make you more likely to get items after a random encounter or a competition route. As you know, 
competition route matches take forever, and they are the only way to get certain items in the game. So if I do a 20 minute match and then I don't get the item that I wanted out of it, it's mainly down to bad luck, but if I didn't have the treasure, treasure pendant on, then it's partially my fault. Because, yeah, as soon as you... This is the main reason to get a silver key. You want a treasure pendant on as soon as possible, and from Nyadi onwards, yeah, reap the benefits. However, there is a second item also found on this planet, which takes a bit more finding, so we'll go through this step by step. You want to skip travel to the bridge park, you will spawn in the east, and you want to walk over to the west, and then follow the bottom screen as we go to this little silo thing, and then the invisible path down. Maybe a switch needs to be pressed, but I didn't have to do any in this particular route, so just check when, you, when you're playing for yourself. But within this silver chest, you can get Chain Shooter, which gives a 10% increase to all shot chains, which is something you will probably be doing quite a lot of in competition routes, so it's a nice little idea to have. Magmavia next, and this one is hidden uh, back to being in plain sight again. Just exit the station and head down here, and you can get yourself Powerful Shooter which means that if the opponent tries to shot block you with the wall or whatever they want to do, uh, their move will become 10% weaker. So basically, it means that your long shots will be less likely to be reduced in power by a shot block. And it's time for the best music again, because we get to take one item out of Fertilia. Always makes me happy to be here. If you skip travel to the life village, you can just see up there in the top left of the screen what we're aiming for. So this is kind of the uh, most straightforward path to it. It's definitely hidden quite out of the way, but as long as you're exploring the village, you will eventually come across it. Just makes me glad to have this audio in my ears again, and I'm sure I'll get it later on in the video when we're getting the gold chests as well. But for now, cycle around over here and you will get anti-critical, which means that your opponent can't get a critical hit in a command duel with you. It also means that you can't get a critical hit either, so it kinda sucks. But there it is! <laughs> and the last one of the silver chests is in Phalamorbius, but it's hidden in plain sight and it's extremely important because it pertains to the competition route right over here, so... It's back to a previous Tale of the Toaster again. The final silver chest can be found on Phalum Orbius. It's found here, within the start of the chapter, and it contains the spaceport ticket, which you can use to open up the very nearby left-hand side route of the spaceport route. This clip is definitely not from an actual episode of the Let's Play Repurpose, but it will allow you to take on Chengdu Champions, a team that I'm thoroughly sick of because they had an incredibly rare item drop in Chrono Stones and I had to play it again and again and again until they finally gave it. But it is a fun team because it's actually made up of all the Mixy Max targets from Chrono Stones. So, back to the actual Let's Play episode. Next, for the gold chests, we have to rather ominously start in the Lost Galaxy. This is the post-game area of Go Galaxy, and so that means anything that's locked behind a gold chest you cannot get until you have explored this area and gone down here. If you see where I'm following on the map, this is the Dead Star Mid, and there's just this little cut-off path that leads underneath. Uh, the map actually starts here with this teleporter, so you kind of spawn in and then circle down and eventually you'll find your way over to one of the most valuable treasure chests in Inazuma 11 history, the gold key. So we'll double back out of the scary lost galaxy and instead head somewhere more peaceful like uh, like Odaiba on Earth um, to start showing what the gold chests contain because if you thought the silver chests were quite plentiful, there's absolutely loads of gold chests in this game. Not too many on Odaiba itself. They mainly keep them in the uh, in the planets that are afar. But right over here, near Brave's random encounter, you can get Spirit Guard X, which does the following. 
reduces the damage that a fighting spirit takes in a spirit battle by 20 FSP. Uh, I, I hope that sounds useful to you. Nevertheless, the main items are actually kept over at the stadium. This is an absolute treasure trove. Over here in the changing room, we have a bunch of cats in support of Trina over here. It's her fan club. But you get four gold chests containing Silver Wolf, Bald Eagle, with an icon we haven't seen before yet, Cosfi, and the Dalphonus. As they say, they are totem manuals. Now that we're in the post game and specifically have the gold key, we can finally start to get totems and give them to players that don't otherwise have them. Again, it's kind of widely regarded that totems are worse than fighting spirits anyway, but if you prefer playing with them, you can start to give them, and you can even substitute the totems that your players already have. For example, Victor has Wolf, but you can give him Silver Wolf, which just looks a little different. It's Wood Element instead of Fire, and statistically it's got... Well, basically, Wolf is a little weaker at level 1, whereas Silver Wolf is weaker at level 5, which is never really going to get to anyway, so... Personally, I would prefer a totem that's more effective at lower levels, but also level 1 itself, you never spend any time as anyway, and from level 2 onwards, uh, this actually starts to favour regular wolf. So this isn't a good idea for Victor, but if you want to give a wolf-themed totem to someone else, it is right there for you. We've got Bald Eagle as well, which is a reskin of Falcon to make it look even more American. Again, it's weaker at level 1 and 2, but by the time you get it to level 5, it could be better. It's also Earth Element. Um, we, in addition to that, have Dolphanus, which we're a bit more familiar with, because that's just the actual Earth one. And then Kosfi is here in Dribble somewhere, I believe. Where is Kosfi? Oh, it's here as a save. So... The skill roulette is different for each of these totems as well, so good to take advantage of the differences and above all it's just good to have totems that we can give to people alongside fighting spirits which are similarly hard to get. So our next destination is over at the Saints Way Stadium if you just take a quick train over. Down here in this derelict corner with seemingly nothing in it is in fact Spirit Smash X. So, just basically the equivalent version of the one we got at the start in Odaiba. This will do more damage during spirit battles. Now, of course, that was going to be a quick visit, but Inazuma Town, as you might expect, has a whole lot more. And some of them are particularly exclusive. So, for now, let's do things in order. I'm going to head over to Windsor Manor for the first one. And playing as Arian, of course, if you head into Arian's own room here in the manor, you can get the totem manual for Pegasus. Wow, this is editing Tale of the Toaster, not matching the face cam. Pegasus is the evolved form of Arian's totem, the better one than the horse that we got to use for about five seconds, but we will also get that totem later in the video. The option is there, and again, you can give it to other players. Nextly, we'll head over to the tower, and I cannot understate the importance of this chest enough. Short of the gold key itself, this is probably the single best chest that we're going to open in the game. Crack it open, you get Spirit Big Moves. You can have this once. Spirit Big Moves is widely considered the best skill in the whole game because already spirits are considered to be better than totems and this will simply make their shots stronger with it. I'm not going to necessarily commit to it. No, I think I am, to be honest. The meta for this game, basically, is you give spirit big moves to Bylong. That will make White Breath on White Wyvern even stronger. And then you mixy-max him with Victor or someone else. 
that will give you a second spirit big moves because that's their exclusive move when you mix your max them. You can also find a random recruit that just has it in their level up move set, like Xanark, I believe, does. But that will allow you to have two spirit big moves on a single player, and at that point, the power of your moves gets ridiculous. Yes, the move can stack, so you can either give two spirit big moves to buy along and make him insanely good, or you can just pick any other player that you want to make better because you're relying on their spirit a lot and you can give it to them. You know what? Let's commit. People people know this is a good idea. I'm going to do it. Bylong is going to have spirit big moves in his move set and then when Mixy Max with Victor he can have it again. Supernova is the safe file I'm pouring more time into anyway but no, I can't bring myself to do it yet, but know that that's probably <laughs> what I'm going to do. Leave in the comments, is that a good idea or should I do something else? For now, we're going to head over to something a little less committal, a little easier to deal with, up on the top floor of Ricardo de Rigo's house. I say house, what I mean is mansion. Down here, you can't even see that this is a gold chest. I... J Oh, it's a silver, actually. Okay, well, we missed that before. Uh, anyway, there's the learning pendant. I guess there's another one somewhere in this building. No, I don't think there is. I was getting my information from the Inazuma 11 wiki, and I think because that chest wasn't visible, they basically misreported a silver chest as being a gold chest. But here in the main building of Ryman School, you can get the move manual for Forever Armoured, if I'm not mistaken, was that in the previous games? No, okay, it was in Chrono Stones as well, but it makes your armor fly last longer, which, all in all, is a fantastic skill to have, so that is definitely something you want to keep in mind. The next gold chest we're going to open up, however, are exclusive to Wi-Fi download areas. You must be playing on a cartridge to make this work, so if you're emulating, I can't help you. But if you connect to the internet, you can get the club room key and advance further down here. Well, we have a level 99 competition route with Gus Martin, but in addition to that, we have two gold chests with fantastic rewards. The Earth Infinity, the strongest shot in the game, is just right here for the benefit of one simple Wi-Fi download, and you can also get the totem for horse. Let's take a look at that, actually, because isn't that the the real um, first totem for Arium? There's Pegasus and there's Horse. Help help me out here. Right, we've got Pegasus and Horse. Okay, so Pegasus is the winged one. Horse is the one without. So basically, Tale of the Toast has been spreading misinformation on the internet again. At least I corrected it <laughs> later on. But yeah, they've actually got the same stats at all levels, just Pegasus has a more expensive totem strike and they have a slightly different skill roulette, so they're not all that different now that you think about it, but uh, Horse is a lot harder to get because, again, well it's quite easy if you're playing on cartridge, you just connect to Wi-Fi, but I know a lot of you people playing along aren't doing that, so <laughs> no move manual for you! Similarly, if you go over to this stadium, again, you must have connected to Wi-Fi and downloaded the keys and bought them from the shop. But when you go into the storage room, in addition to level 99 route from Nelly, you can get one more gold chest, which contains Black Bear. So that's a reskin of Buddy's Grizzly Bear, different element. It's all there for the taking. That's everything on mainland Earth. So the next thing we want to do is head to some other planets and see what lies in the world beyond. Alright then, back to Silica and one of these is pretty easy and the other takes a bit more finding. You both will be starting them from the desert port. Right here on the right we can get the move manual for Gravel Gavel. So we're starting to get special moves that were exclusive to the aliens from afar now, which is good. 
Uh, the other one takes a bit more discovering. It's here in the Great Northern Desert, so not somewhere you would uh, revisit in a hurry unless you had a good agenda for doing so. I mean, it's fun to explore, but it's also very big to explore. But right here in the gold chest, you can get the move manual for Rhino, which makes you more likely to knock down another player, but you will also cause more fouls in the process. Anyway, nice that you guys can just uh, sunbathe now that we've uh, destroyed your planet or whatever. I guess maybe the NPCs... No, okay, they're still talking about the destruction of their planet, but anyway, we, we saved you. It's, it's okay now. Next, we're going to be doing Nyadi, and this place is brutal. It's got three gold chests, and they're all hidden in some capacity. This one is the least hidden, but it still kind of gets me off guard because the lighting of this place obscures it quite well. But right here outside the station, you can get the Infinity Pendant. So, stat boosts across the board. The next one, though. Oh, my. Skip travel to the bridge park, and you want to be on the east. Now, follow my instructions to the letter. I'm not going to say anything that isn't relevant. Okay, so, by default, this path is leading to the right. You need to change that first, press this switch, so that you can head down. That will grant you access to the Legend Gate room, but also with four different cloisters, one of which will let you press it and move this hidden path, which by default is leading to the shop. So we'll press it again. I obviously had to do a practice run to make sure I knew where I was going, but by default that will be leading to the shop. You need to press the button so that it instead goes to this secret path. Then press the oyster up here again so that we can carry on moving. And after all of that, you can finally access this very, very hidden path right to the middle bit. This bit's filled with treasure chests that I already opened in the main Let's Play, along with one final item. Which is a ticket to an exclusive competition route. They hid a competition route behind all that. That is so much effort for such a big, missable reward. I'm really not keen on the fact that they did that. But it's also not even over. There's a third treasure chest on the planet of Nyadi, and this is in an area which, frankly, you forget is even in the game at all. You have to skip travel over to Dewdrop Crescent, or whatever they call it in the Japanese version, head down this ladder, explore this little pool, remember that there's an off-screen-ish door, and you can go to the submarine underpass, <laughs> and know that specifically up here in this corner with the dangerous music, you can get Blocking Boss which makes it more likely for your defenders to take the ball from their opponent without actually getting into a command duel with them. Anyway, so that's Silica. I'm getting off of here as quick as possible. Magmavia is similarly tough. There are four gold chests here, and three of them are pretty easy, as long as you know where to go, thankfully. But then another one is going to rock our socks off. For now, we can get the totem serberica, whatever you call it. Let's just find it for the sake of example. I'm going to guess it's in block. I was wrong. I'm going to guess it's in dribble. I was wrong. I'm going to guess it's in save. Yeah, third time's the charm. It's a three-headed hydra thingy reskin. Um, but it's earth and it's it's got moves. <laughs> I don't don't mean to sound so unenthusiastic. Uh, I'm just not ready for the fourth of these chests that we need to get within Magmavia. But for now, if we go to the Ancestor Village and check in on Old Man's House, you can have a look to the left. And within this gold chest, we have Demon Dribbler, which always helps to have. I believe these are photo opportunities as well, or at least one of them is. Uh, those two statues in the entrance certainly are, so don't miss them if you haven't gotten them all yet. But we also talk to this guy to leave 
the ancestor village and then we can go down to this coal mine cliff where you can now get black ash one of my favorite special moves in the series there's also a ladder here that's available after we've completed the chapter which allows you to regroup within track road new recording session now this took some finding but thankfully they don't make you go into the minecart labyrinth of kicking footballs at various switches area for a silver or a gold chest. This one is out in the open, but nevertheless, still really hard to find because it's mentioned as being at the station. And you kind of think of like the entrance to the minecart navigation thing or maybe at the actual train station. But no, it's here right in front of the stadium. It's so obscure, I didn't even get the regular treasure chest the first time around, but there's a fireball bracelet. And in the gold chest is the full match ticket. So again, another whole competition route hiding right out of sight. This isn't really that visible at all. You can maybe, uh, you actually can't even change the camera in this area. So you just have to know to go down here specifically on the cart thing on the way to the football stadium that is now no longer there. Anyways, back to Fertilia. <laughs> Three golden chests to open down here in Fertilia, and the first one is really easy, just right outside the station, but slightly less hidden than the Nyadi one. You get Natural Love, one of the best dribbling moves in the game that we already have applied to Trina, and whatever is the nearest player to her for that interaction. I'm not sure if it picks the nearest male player or just the nearest player in general, but I don't think I've ever seen natural love happen between anything other than Trina and a guy. But that would be interesting knowledge to find out anyway. But nevertheless, uh, that's where you get, again, one of your best dribbling options and also a really just funny one to have on other players. Like, it's both good and entertaining. It's kind of like ambush in that regard. Um, but the second one is actually going to take us into the Pinewood Forest, or the Karamarine Forest, to use its official Japanese name. I am not certain on the quickest way to get here, but if you just follow the path that I'm doing right now, you will get there. Basically, it is on the second map screen, and I'll show you what to look out for when we get there. Unfortunately, skip travelling to Pinewood Forest puts you kind of too far in it puts you to where the match against the terrible shadows is so that's not much use if you see on the bottom screen that pal pack item icon that's essentially where we need to get to so on this second map i think this is probably the quickest path but we're basically aiming for this pal pack society what does it actually contain the wilting flowers i was actually i think this must be post game exclusive because this is all the players from the Chrono Stones Desperados team. Uh, it, we don't have Asta on there yet because we've not scouted five players, but that's good to know that they're there alongside the totem for Dole Mega. Let's just have a quick look at what that is. I'm gonna guess it's a dribble. I'm gonna guess it's a block. I'm gonna guess it's a save. <laughs> uh, there we go, Earth. Element stun minus level three on the skill roulette. It's it will it will save the ball if you're trying to train up a good goalkeeper. Then totems are kind of the basically totems are considered worse than fighting spirits in every regard except for goalkeeping. And even then, it's mainly the AI that's better using a totem than it is a player character. Not necessarily true in a competitive sense, but. Totem goalkeepers are really good, so keep that in mind. The last one we want to do, skip travel to the Drazil Tree, where the same used stadium used to be and now isn't. Head back on this worm thing, and again right next to the Palpac Society is a gold chest containing blood, sweat and tears. Not the most useful skill in the world, but it's better than having no skills. So. Next, Phalomorbius. So, the Phalomorbius, there are only two gold chests to keep an eye on. For the first one, you want to head to the central square, and then right up in this corner up here, you can get 
critical to increase your chances of getting a critical hit by 50%, which is no small feat. That's at least worth sticking on somebody. It's not like the most reliable skill, but it certainly is more useful to have it than not. You can skip travel to the Fallon Royal Palace for the other item, but I'm going to do it manually just in case you've never been to this area before. Only in the post game can you walk up to this area and from the gondola, in addition to the stadium, you can now choose Fallon Royal Palace. Where even a bit of supernova post game story takes place, but that's not what we're doing in this video. Here, if you haven't explored this area before, there's plenty of good items you can get. Like, for example, the Blower Kiss goal celebration is found in the throne room. And this Palpac Society is for all kinds of galaxy exclusive characters like the commentators, and you can even get Victor Blade and more. You didn't even seem that hard to get. These are the hyper evolved children from Ragnarok. These are all the Eldorado people, so very good societies. But over here in Rolea's room, you can go to the right and grab yourself Ogliteration, one of the best defensive moves in the game. Feels like I'm repeating myself here, but it's I mean, it's part of Goldie's uh, Mixy Max and part of Pants' level up moveset as well, I believe. So, no, it's part of uh, Prezari's moveset. That's the one. Can't uh, confuse them, but... Nevertheless, so do explore this place properly if you haven't been there before because there's plenty more than just the gold chests, but it's a nice post-game treat. And speaking of post-game treats, you can only in the in the post-game visit the past for Ryman Junior High. So here we are at specifically the old version of the school, and to close out this video we have three more gold chests that we can collect in this very nostalgic area. So first of all, you can head into the old club room. There's a competition route here hosted by Mr. Wintersea, and there's also a gold chest containing big moves. So not spirit big moves, but still the version for regular moves, which is definitely better than nothing as long as you've got the TP to spare and even a picture of a football table to boot. I will be making use of skip travel to take you to the others, but here in the healing point spot of Inazuma Park, specifically in the past, you can get Final Death Zone. And I'm so glad that they finally made this available because I, you could go through an entire extensive playthrough of Chrono Zones' post game and never even see this move. It was given to Inazuma Legend National. And it was, at the time, the joint strongest move in the game, I think. Or at least very close. And it was a long shot as well. It's absurdly good, but they made it nearly inobtainable. And very, very few characters had it in their moveset as well. But now, you can get it and give it to just about anyone you want. All you need is the gold chest and to have entered that area before. This guy is still blocking off the tower. And indeed, you will be blocked off from this final gold chest if you have not connected your Nintendo 3DS to the internet and downloaded the Wi-Fi options. Again, if you're playing on emulator, I can't help you with this one, just cheat or something because that's probably what you can do anyway. But here in the Tower Cabin Hut, there's a level 99 competition route hosted by Sylvia and in the gold chest, you can get the Totem Horned Owl. So a slight deviation on Keenan's, which means it's going to be a blocking one, right? Yes, yeah, so the original owl is earth element so that it would suit Keenan better, I guess. But this one's a bit more normal. It's Harry Potter colours, it's wind element. It's what you would expect from an owl. And it will give you super dash level two, level two. Uh, quite different to the other one, but... I could not say which is better because people don't tend to use totems anyway, but you could be the one to change that as long as you have downloaded the key to this hut from Nintendo Network and bought it from the Ryman shop, presumably is also needed. Or do you get it from Mr. Veteran in the uh, uh, old Diver Stadium? Well, who knows? That's in a different video. For now, we have opened all of the gold and silver chests in Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy. Now I need to go and do this all over again in Supernova. But here in the recording of Big Bang, 
that's it. Get yourself those che those keys to the chest. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, rubber bum bum bum, and you can have all the items in the world. It's been a long one. Right? Toodle pip, have fun with all those items. <laughs>